Hello and welcome back. Today we'll show you a, an example of how to draw molecular orbitals for beryllium dihydride. So let's draw that molecule up real quick while we get started. So you may notice that I already have chosen the point group D2H. And you might say, well, beryllium dihydride is actually a linear molecule and it should have symmetry D infinite H. However, that point group is infinite and so we have to choose a smaller size to work with because we can't work with an infinite number of symmetry operations. So we choose D2H because that is a smaller point group and it still gets us the answers that we need. So now we'll choose our coordinate axes and generally speaking we choose the highest order of rotation as the z-axis or and also we choose the most number of atoms to be collinear with the z-axis which means that uh, the horizontal axis in this case is our z and then we can choose the other axes at our convenience so I'm going to choose up as X and out of the paper as Y now that we have that we can start constructing what happens in each symmetry orientation and all of that so we need to determine for each symmetry operation how many of the hydrogens move or stay in the same location. If they move, we must record them as uh, zero and the number that stay in position during that symmetry operation uh, will receive uh, a one, so one per atom that stays the same. So for the identity operation, which is E, which is that first column, we'll see that that is do nothing to the molecule and so if we do nothing to the molecule uh, none of the atoms will move so that is a two hydrogens and stay the same then if we rotate around the z-axis again n the position of the hydrogens does not change and so we'll have a two there as well now, if we rotate around the y-axis, then the position of the hydrogens will, will change. Um, let's see here. Pointer is here. So this hydrogen will rotate this way over to there. That hydrogen will rotate that way over into that one. So, since both of them move, we're going to record a zero. It is a similar uh, experience for the X coordinate system. Uh, the next operation is inversion. And during an inversion, the only atom that won't move is the beryllium, and that is not our concern at the moment. So that also moves. And then we come to the reflection operation. So a reflection of the plane that is the XY plane, that will actually move the hydrogen on the right to the hydrogen on the left and the one on the left to the right. So both of those move. We'll record a zero down for that. And now the XZ plane. Now since the z-axis contains the linear part of the molecule, reflections including the z-axis should not move any of the hydrogens. So if we have an xz plane which is the flat portion of the uh, molecule as I've drawn it, uh, a reflection there will not move any of the atoms and we can see the same thing will happen 
for the, the plane coming straight out of the screen. This is now our reducible representation for the two hydrogen atoms. So 2H. H. As the name suggests, we now need to reduce this. Uh, since there's only two atoms, and that means two atomic orbitals, we should only end up with two molecular orbitals, so we may be able to solve this just by looking at it. Uh, there are more systematic ways of going into solving that, and I have another video that showed how to do that. Look at the ammonia video. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to provide the answer in, in the interest of speed here. We should have an AG orbital and a B1U orbital. So I'm going to write those down here, A, G, and B, 1, U. Now, if we add up the characters, the individual pieces of this together, we should get the reducible representation. So A, 1, A, G is just 1, 1, 1, 1, all the way across A, G, or A, 1, G, or A, 1, they're always all ones all the way across. Uh, and then if we look at B1U, we're going to have uh, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1. And if we add the vertical columns here, they should equal the reducible representation, and they do. Uh, 1 and 1 is 2, and again, and then negative 1 and 1 is 0 for the beginning of the CY, or C2Y. Uh, so those are the molecular, uh, the representations for the hydrogen atoms. Now we will need the representations for the beryllium uh, atomic orbitals to see how they'll match up with our new molecular orbitals on the hydrogen. So... For the valence shell, we need to consider orbitals 2s and 2p. The s orbitals are spheres, so they are totally symmetric, and they will have the ag symmetry. So, for our beryllium, we'll write that down here, we will have an ag orbital, that is for the s orbital. And then, uh, conveniently, a lot of uh, character tables, and I've included them here, include what the symmetry of the uh, p orbitals are. And so we can see here, here's the pz orbital, uh, py, and px. So the pz orbital is b1u, and the py is b2u, and the px is b3u. So we write those down here too. So B one U, uh, B two U, and B three U. Now on the next page, I will show how these can combine in the molecular orbital diagram. I've sketched out the skeleton of the molecular orbital diagram uh, and roughly tried to match what the atomic orbital energies are to the vertical scale. So much lower on the page is a lower atomic orbital energy, higher up is a little bit higher. As we can see, hydrogen has a lower uh, atomic orbital energy, so I've placed it lower on the page. So we've placed both hydrogen atomic our molecular orbitals on the left and beryllium's four uh, valence, uh, valence molecular or atomic orbitals on the right. So now we can start combining these together. So since the Ag orbital for beryllium is lower because it came from the S orbital, S orbitals are lower in energy, that will be the first orbital down here. And next, we will have our B1U orbital, 
which will be down here in a little bit, somewhere in there. It's kind of a, a guess. And then since B2U and B3U have no match for hydrogens, they are non-bonding, and so they should stay the same energy in the molecular orbital diagram. So this is uh, the B2U and B3U. So down here is uh, A, G, and B1, U. Now we will also form antibonding orbitals. And that should be first AG character. And at the very top, we should have B1U. The B1U is higher in energy, partially because it has another node when you draw it out, and maybe I'll make another video about that. But for now, an easy explanation for this is that the B1U orbital that it is originating from, the atomic orbital that it's coming from, is higher in energy than the AG orbital, Therefore, it will be higher in energy in the molecular orbital chart. Now we need to fill in a few electrons here. So we have two electrons for hydrogen, and we'll have two electrons for beryllium, uh, which are in the s orbital, as you may note from the periodic table. However, when it combines, it will move over into the B1U orbital. So we'll have two bonding interactions uh, and no non-bonding interactions and no antibonding interactions.